Hi and welcome to this video about finding slope in our Physics 30S cl uh, class. Uh, slope is one of the things that we can learn from graphs. So before we jump right into slope, let's just remind ourselves what are the different things that we can, uh, when we look at graphs, what can we look for? So of course one of them is we can look at slope. Another one that we can look at is uh, the y-intercept. A third one that we can look at is the area under the line. And I don't think we've done that yet in this course. Uh, and the last one is that from the graph we can develop a mathematical model. I'll just write math model. So how about for this particular xt graph or a position time graph? So um, just a heads up, instead of saying position, and it's so long to, to write, instead of position, I'm going to write x because uh, we're doing horizontal motion, so it's going to be x. And I'll say x versus t graph. So what do these things mean in particular for the position time graph? Well, if you recall, slope on the position time graph is equal to velocity. Uh, the y-intercept. Well, if I was to look at this particular one, this is where the y-intercept is, and the y-intercept would be uh, where we start. So we can say on the position time graph, the y-intercept is your starting point. Uh, the area under the line. So for this particular one, and we'll do it more later in this course, if I was to look at the area under the line, it's easy for me to do this because I can erase it, so I don't think you should be doing it at home, but it would be that area right there. And sometimes that is something meaningful, and, and the easiest way to investigate whether or not that's going to be meaningful is to say, well, what does what is the area of one of those blocks uh, on our graph? So if I was to look at that, the this dimension, this side, is 5 seconds, and this side is 5 meters. So if I was to multiply those two out, I would get 25 meters times seconds, not divided by, because to find the area, you do the length times the width. Does 25 meters times seconds, is meters times seconds something that we find meaningful? I, I don't think so. So we won't be using, we won't be using uh, area. So we'll say for for this particular graph, for the position time graph, uh, the area under the line is not meaningful. The mathematical model that we developed, and again really what you do for the mathematical model is you take your y, x, y equals kx plus b and you substitute all the things in here. So uh, the y in this case, position, we actually use the x value for the x variable for that. So x is going to be equal to, now this is means the slope. And we just said that the slope is equal to velocity. So I'll be putting a v in there for velocity. My x-axis is actually time in this case. So put time like this. Plus, and now b is my y-intercept. So I'll just say, well, my starting position I'll put as x x0 meaning my beginning position. So this would be my general mathematical model uh, and then when specifically if I want a specific mathematical model for an actual object I would be putting in values for V and I would be putting in values for this starting position but this is just my general model. Okay so now that we got that finished I think let's get to our topic on hand which is about the slope. So I want to uh, spend a couple minutes just doing a couple examples of how to find the slope of a line and I know you've done this before in math class but so we'll do this as well now in physics class so we're gonna look at two different periods of time we're gonna look at this first interval the 0 to 10 so this uh, this first section we're gonna look at first would be our 0 to 10 seconds and then later on we'll look at the second section will be the 10 to 25 so looking at that first section we're gonna say we're gonna find the slope so slope generally is equal to rise over run on an XT graph on position time graph the slope actually means velocity so I'm gonna substitute slope for V here and the rise is the, the change in the x position. So I can say change in the x position divided by the run, which is the change in the time. Um, 
change is always the second one minus the first one. So I can expand it out to look like this. In fact, you probably remember from your math class, you often said y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you might say, how come the x's got moved around? Well, again, it's just because um, this is normally your x-axis and this is your y-axis, but on my position time graph, my y-axis is actually labeled with an x and my x-axis is labeled with a t. So that's why in, in general we'd say this is about slope. That's a general formula and this is the specific one for a position time graph. Okay, so now really all that's left to do is to, to find out those four points. So I will say that this here will be my initial point it comes first and this is my final point over there so this is point I'm gonna say at the beginning and the end of the line let's try to figure out the slope so um, looking at the beginning here so this will be x1 will be 30 and t1 is going to be equal to 0 so looking at that spot what is the x value and what is the y value so here I'll say uh, oh, but I need to x2. Here's my final position, and here is my x2, and here is my t2. So overall, I can say that x2 is equal to 10, and I'm going to put the units every time, 10 meters minus the initial position up at the top there was 30 meters, and now when I do my time, my second time is 10 seconds minus 0 seconds. Uh, I'll put this in my next line here. 10 meters minus 30 meters is minus 20 meters divided by 10 seconds. So I will get a value of negative 2 meters per second. Uh, if you wanted to just look at this and say, oh, it dropped, it went from 30 down to 10, so therefore the x values went down by 20, and then therefore put in that minus 20, that, that's fine. Um, although the first couple times it may be a good idea to do the x2 minus x1. Uh, you'll notice that because it goes downhill, that's why it's negative, so it has a, a negative velocity. Let's try... 10 minus 25. So again, I'm going to say, maybe I'll switch colors here. I'll say that my v, my slope, is equal to the change in x divided by the change in time. Now my 1 and my 2 change. So before it was uh, 1 here and 2 there. Now I'm going to look at the beginning of this line, so that would be 1. And the end of that line will be 2. So when I type in uh, x2 minus x1, over t2 minus t1 well my final position is 25 meters minus the initial position which was 10 meters all divided by the final time is 25 seconds minus 10 seconds oh those work out the same don't they so I'm gonna get 15 meters divided by 15 seconds. 15 divided by 15 is 1, so I will get 1 meters per second. So you'll notice a couple things. We went from negative to positive, and in our graph we went from downhill to uphill. Uh, the other thing is 2 is a larger number than 1, and this line is more steep. It's going downwards at a very steep compared to this was going up at not as steep. The last thing we're not actually going to do, but I just want you to think, uh, to ponder for a second. What if we were considering the velocity from 0 to 25 seconds? Now, each one of these is a straight line. This is constant velocity from 0 to 10. And then the constant velocity changed from 10 to 25. What if we were interested in the velocity from 0 to 25 seconds? Would it be constant velocity? I don't think it would be constant velocity, but if we were to talk about this, I think we would have to bring out the word words average. So uh, not constant. So we'd have to think about average velocity. Um, 
Now, be careful. A lot of people, when they think about average, they say, oh, if I had a negative 2 and then I had 1, how do we often do average? We'd add the 2 together and divide by 2. But I don't think that would necessarily be the case. But we could go and take a look at those two points and do some more calculations. So I'm just going to leave that with you, and by the next video, it's going to be about average velocity. All right, thank you very much, and I will see you in class.